Hey Defenders, welcome back. In the last video we demonstrated just how easy it was to copy any web page that you wanted to via the HTT Track tool. And from the offensive perspective, you know, that tool can be easily used in phishing attacks and phishing campaigns against your employees and internal users or even your customers. Right. And now let's look at this from the uh, defensive side. Right. And how can we apply some defense to stop this type of attack that we simulated? So stick around and we'll jump into it. But first, time for my shameless plug. If you want to learn more about our company, head on over to opensecure.co. If you would like to hire us for a project, select the contact us link in the description of this video. To see firsthand the power of open source, take advantage of our interactive demo. Select the demo link in the description of this video to start exploring. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so in the last video, we were able to easily replicate Wells Fargo's login page by just pointing our HTT track tool at it and uh, just with a few clicks we're able to easily replicate this page and that's great from the offensive side but now how can we on the defensive side al be alerted on if someone has successfully copied our you know one of our login pages let's say you know, maybe I have a re reverse proxy stood up uh, that my internal users and customers authenticate to um, uh, prior to interacting with whatever applications uh, they are interacting with, right? And so using this tool called Canary Tokens, we're actually able to embed some JavaScript within our HTML of our, let's say, login page. And what this tool will do is if someone copies the HTML, it compares the domain of who is loading the HTML page, and if it doesn't match, we'll call back out to us. So essentially, it'll alert us if someone is hosting our login page on a different domain that we uh, either don't own or it is not, or a domain that's not supposed to be running this, this page, right? So let's see exactly how this works. So there's an awesome tool called Canary Tokens, uh, which are kind of like uh, mini honeypots uh, or tripwires you can kind of think of that are just kind of cookie crumbs that we can leave behind that attackers can trigger, right? And while triggering, uh, if they trigger this type of alert, it calls back out to us and will alert us saying, hey, someone has you know, cloned your website, uh, someone has opened a Word document that you've kind of uh, baited in a way, right? So, so we can set booby traps out that will detect someone interacting with them and call back to us when, when they do. Uh, so if you go to canarytokens.org, they actually host, they actually provide us a way to, select, to create a token is what they call it. And enable it um, via their website. We can also spin up a Dockerized version of this, which we'll do in the next video if you want to actually host this tool yourself. But Canary Tokens um, will host it for you if you want to. So you can go to canarytokens.org. In this example, we're going to select the cloned website. Uh, you can see there's a, a ton of other token options we could set. So like a Word document, right? Maybe I select a Word document token and attach this onto a Word document that's maybe on our like uh, internet SharePoint, maybe, right? And I stick it in a location and give it a name that you know doesn't have any business purpose or user purpose. No one should be interacting with it. And if someone does open it uh, and is just kind of poking around and being suspicious, then they would trigger this alert and it would call back to us. But we'll cover that in a later video. Uh, and what we're focused on is the cloned website. So you can see it says trigger an alert when your website is cloned. So I'm go ahead and select that. So then it asks to provide an email address and this will be where the alert will go back out to. So I will give my email of info at opensecure.co. A reminder when your note is triggered, so you could, you know, if you're doing this for multiple web pages, you could say, you know, web page one, web page two. In this example, I'll just say, please subscribe. 
and then you give the domain, right? So I could say whatever the domain is that you own. Uh, so I'll say opensecure.co in this example, right? And so uh, this would be your business-owned domain or you know whatever domain you're, you're setting this up for. Um, so I'll set opensecure.co and I'll select create my canary token. And what this does is this generates some JavaScript for us that we can embed into the HTML of our login page. So I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll go ahead and open up the HTML of my page, right? So HTTTrack created this directory for me. Um, there's all these subdirectories that contain, you know, JavaScript, CSS, um, images, right? But what I'm interested in is this index HTML because if I open this guy up, I get this page, right? So you can see in the you see my URL path here that my browser's just opened this file, right? And so this is no longer wellsfargo.com. This is, you know, this index.html file that sits on my on my desktop. So I'll go ahead and open this up. Uh, I'll just open it up with a text editor. Uh, so I'll just do notepad in this case. And hopefully the format's okay and it looks like it is. And now I'll just add this JavaScript of really anywhere in here. So I just want to make sure it's not included with any other script tags, right? Like what you see here. So uh, looks like this would be good here. Uh, HTML is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but Canary Tokens allows us to really just copy and paste, right? And I will need to add, the one thing they don't add or include are the script tags. So I'll need to do a script opening tag and then a script closing tag. So JavaScript, so my browser knows to, to run this. Otherwise, this would just be text that sits within and wouldn't, uh, my browser wouldn't actually run JavaScript. You know, uh, pr pretty much all modern day browsers uh, will run JavaScript. That's how a lot of web applications uh, work. And of course, our halal, how a lot of uh, attacks are also successful. <laughs> all right, and now let's kind of walk this, well, let's walk through this and see what's happening. So upon my browser opening the index.html, it'll look to see if the domain is opensecure.co. So in other words, it'll open and we'll see, hey, does the domain, is it www.opensecure.co? And of course it won't be, right? Because this is opening on, because I'm opening just this index.html file, right? So, but of course, in a legitimate use case, your business would own the domain, right? Whether that be, you know, youtube.com, right? And it, uh, as an example of youtube.com, there was a login page I wanted to set this up for. The page that would be loaded would be youtube.com. So every time that's loaded, as long as the domain matches youtube.com, this alert won't fire. And so that, that's kind of the logic what's happening here. It's looking to see, hey, is the domain that's loading this web page opensecure.co and if not then we're going to progress to down here well where we call back to canary tokens so we're going to call back to canary tokens canary, canary tokens is going to see this token right so if i go into manage this token we can see that it hasn't been triggered yet right and and this is all happening within the browser right because the browser is allowed to run javascript the browser will roll through this logic, right? So it'll compare the domain. If it doesn't equal opensecure.co, it'll then reach out to Canary Tokens and can and it will basically upload this JPEG image. So I guess that's kind of how they're doing it under the hood, which will then in turn cause an alert within Canary Tokens. And we should also get an email alert because we also verified that. So let's go ahead and save this. So if I save that, I'll just exit out and then I'll reopen this page and let's see what happens. And so what should happen is my browser runs that JavaScript, sees that we are not in fact, you know, www.opensecure.co. And then uh, upon seeing that, it should in turn fire off the alert. And let's see if it did. So if I go history, 
And sure enough, we got an incident. And sure enough, we also received an email saying Canary token triggered. Uh, it's alerting us. It's giving us the source IP of who triggered the alert as also the location, which is cool, right? So if this was wellsfargo1.com, I would see that. I would see that domain as being the location and be like, whoa, what's, you know, what's going on here? Someone is hosting a website of ours that they cloned, right? And now we are receiving that alert. And you can also, if I select this manage, it'll take us here and we can see the history. And they give you a map, so uh, that's kind of cool. But they really give a, and they geolocate and um, provide some more kind of metadata around it, right? And Canary Tokens has alerted me that, hey, someone has cloned your website and this is the IP address they are coming from, right? So pretty cool. So the, the kind of the, the thought process of this, if I, we can kind of walk, let's go ahead and walk through the, the total process from attacker to, to defense, right? So we'll go ahead and make a network diagram here. And let's go ahead and walk through this from our whole demo. So step one, right, I copied wellsfargo.com with HTT track, HT track, right? So that was our first step, right? And this is this is from the offensive side. Now say I am actually looking to run a phishing campaign against uh, customer, un unsuspecting customers, users of Wells Fargo, right? Or even maybe Wells Fargo's employees themselves or whatever the case may be. I would host the JavaScript, CSS, HTML pages, all that that I copied from wellsfargo.com and I'll call it just hacker.com, right? And I would then launch a phishing campaign with that to get unsuspected user, unsuspecting users to interact with hacker.com, but they would think it's wellsfargo.com, right? That would be the goal because I've, I've copied Wells Fargo's HTML to make it a exact replica of what users would expect to log in with, right? And in a successful phishing campaign, right, I would uh, I would get users to interact with this and I would I would capture their their credentials. The defense that we're going with here is to interject ourselves uh, between before this phishing campaign is able to be to be launched, right? So ideally, I would use HTT track to copy Wells Fargo's you know web app essentially, right? And their, their HTML images and all that. And what I would probably do before actually hosting this on a domain is you know see what it looks like after copying right so i would go ahead and open this and during the copy process right if i have canary tokens deployed well they're bringing that javascript in with it right so they're copying that too so upon them just opening up this file even if it's not attached to an actual domain that's on the internet that they own uh we would be alerted on it right because the JavaScript would run, it would call back out to Canary Tokens, which in turn Canary Tokens would trigger an alert, right? And we would get exactly what we see here. And we get the, the location as well, right? So then with this knowledge, we can say, hey, this guy from this source IP just copied our website. So we could you know, maybe blacklist him from if he's trying to run a phishing campaign against our internal users, right? We could disallow any emails from his domain, right? So maybe he's coming with hacker at, you know, please subscribe .com. Well, on our, on our mail servers, we could blacklist this domain. Or if he's hosting this on, you know, hacker1.com, right? He's trying to get our victims, our, our users to navigate to hacker1.com, which would then present them this Wells Fargo login page. We could proactively, you know, blacklist that IP or domain on the firewall. So our internal users can't even get out to this guy. So by just setting up this little tripwire, we're able to detect when someone is up to no good before they're able to successfully launch their campaign, right? And 
you know, being on the proactive side of things, that that's that this gives us a huge advantage uh, over these guys, right? And we we would hopefully be able to shut them down quickly. But of course, we need a mechanism to be able to detect when something like this happens. And and this is where Canary Tokens really benefits us, right? So we see that they copied this website, and even if they didn't, you know, look at the HTML uh, prior to hosting it on on their own web server. Once they hosted it on their web server, they, of course, wouldn't be able to spin it up on a domain of opensecure.co, wellsfargo.com, because they don't own that domain, right? So, so the domain within the JavaScript would not match what it, what it needs to to not trigger an alert, right? So, it's, so if they then spun this up on hacker1.com, the JavaScript would say, oh, that domain does not match opensecure.co, so I'm going to trigger this alert. You know, of course, this isn't a catch-all solution, right? This, so one issue is they, whenever they open the HTML, they would have to be connected to the internet, right? Because if they're not, then the call out to canarytokens.com wouldn't work. So if they, they ran the HTT track tool and then disconnected their computer from the internet, and launch this HTML, of course the browser would try to run this JavaScript, but because they don't have internet access, wouldn't be able to reach back out to canarytokens.com and we would we would be blind to it until they opened it up on a server or computer that's that's connected to, to the internet. They could also another way they could get around this is if they, they copy the you know they copy our website, they open up the HTML and are actually sifting through it, right, line by line to see what exactly our page is loading, right? And they could see something like this and, you know, just do a quick search on, oh, what's Canary Tokens? And be able to detect, oh, this is a, this is a tripwire. And all they would have to do would just be to remove it from their HTML file and it wouldn't run and wouldn't alert us, right? So that would be another way they could get it get around that as well but you know we can't really get around the if they don't have access to the internet you know in today's day most people have access to the internet uh, especially if you're someone who is actually trying to launch a phishing campaign you're gonna have to have access to the internet uh, and to actually run you know any of these website copier tools you would need access to the internet to begin with so Nine times out of 10, that's probably not gonna be an issue. What's gonna be our biggest issue is an attacker looking at the HTML of, an attacker looking at the HTML of whatever website they've copied and uh, going through line by line and detecting that this JavaScript is here, being familiar with it and saying, oh, this is a tripwire, I can just remove this which of course would never then call back to us. But what we can do is make this JavaScript a little more obscure. So it's not obvious as to what it's doing. So if I go to a JavaScript obfuscator and let's go ahead and open this guy and let's go ahead and just copy and paste our JavaScript in here. Let's go ahead and paste that in there and run an obfuscation tool. And look at that, this is pretty garbage, uh, right? It's not obvious at all what this is doing. So what we can do is copy this and replace our, our if statement here with our obfuscated code. Cause this is, this is like, this wouldn't take a rocket scientist to be able to figure out what exactly is going on here. But if we obfuscate it, we make it that much more difficult to see what the heck is going on. You know, hope uh, the, the goal would be an attacker would just be like, oh, what is that garbage? And just skip right over it, right? Without even looking at it or giving it the time of day because they have no idea of how to understand that. So if we go ahead and save that off, I'll, I'll exit that and we'll open this again. And now the obfuscation tool, right? Our, our logic, our JavaScript logic is, is, is still the same. Right, and we just obfuscated it using this tool. And if we go back into email here, we see that um, we just triggered our alert again, right? And I can manage this token again, and we should see that we've had three alerts. Yep, here we go on this guy. And now 
our JavaScript is a lot more confusing and isn't clear as to what is being done, which, which is good, right? And we don't want to make it obvious to attackers what exactly is going on. However, we are stuck with the domain, right? So we do see this canarytokens.com still. So that's still something that could be obvious. You know, I could replace this with an IP address to not make it as obvious. You know, an attacker would have to do it, take an extra step uh, and do an NS lookup and see what the IP address resolved to. So if I open a command prompt, And if I go ahead and resolve that IP, so now I could point this to the IP address, of course, instead of the domain name, 63.80. Uh, need to get rid of the .com, yep. So save that, exit, and let's open that again. All right, we load and we should get an alert, and if we uh, inspect, the elements here I will need to find it and here we are here right we still see our obfuscated JavaScript and we see that we're no longer pointing to canarytokens.com but we're pointing to the IP address right so I just ran that so we should have triggered another alert and if I refresh this we should have four alerts yep and we have four alerts now so that's good of course, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, though, to do an NS lookup or something on this IP address, right? Um, so they could still run an NS lookup and see that this is canarytokens.com, do a, you know, do some research on that and see what exactly this is and see that it is a, a tripwire. But we could also host this ourselves, right? So, you know, you would expect a web page to, lo to load its own domains, right? So like if I'm, for example, wellsfargo.com, we see a lot of calls, like where I'm hovering here, we see static.wellsfargo.com, right? So, you know, with the complexity of most web applications now, you know, seeing them call back to domains like wellsfargo.com that are actually, to domains that are actually associated with the web page, right, isn't, isn't uncommon practice, right? That, that's pretty common. So if we were to do something like that to where our callback is actually to a domain that we own, that would be even more obfuscation to, a, to an attacker and they would probably just overlook this, right? So, but in order to do that, we'll actually have to host our own Canary Tokens server, right? And we will tackle that in the next video. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you there.